Let's bring into the conversation now Vermont Senator and Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. Senator Sanders, we saw a little bit of your response just by looking at the camera on you uh, tonight in the room. But uh, I wonder if you felt like uh, you heard a little bit of your own message, a little bit of I... your own your own campaign speech, even in some of what <laughs> President Obama said tonight. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe the president was was paying attention to my basic speech there. Uh, I thought what the president was saying is, look, change is not a bad thing. We have to utilize change to improve lives for all of our people. And he gave some really great examples. And the example that stuck in my mind was the issue of climate change. You know, our Republican friends can deny the reality of climate change all they want, but that's not going to stop the floods and the droughts. And what we have got to do is understand that with our technology, with our scientific capability, we can not only combat climate change, but we can create millions of decent paying jobs working with countries all over the world to save the planet. And the other issue that he got into, which was pretty interesting, I thought, is his concern about the state of American democracy. And the fact that he's absolutely right, that a lot of working people, middle income people saying, why should I vote? Why should I participate? Big money interest contribute hundreds of millions of dollars into uh, campaigns. I just got my own vote. I'm not going to do it. And he says, reclaim American democracy. Get involved. So when he talks about that, yes, I don't have a super PAC. We're depending on small individual contributions. And that's the direction I think we need to go in this country. Take on super PACs. Take on billionaires who are trying to buy elections, revitalize American democracy. And I think his point was a very good one. Senator Sanders, a lot of people had uh, looked ahead to the speech tonight from President Obama, thinking that some of the messaging uh, would be for you, would be for you and for Secretary Clinton, uh, maybe even for Governor O'Malley. It would be about what he wants the Democratic Party, what he wants his potential successors from his own party uh, to prioritize uh, in the race to succeed him, and if indeed you do, one of you do does end up becoming the next president. Do you do you feel like that advice is out there from the president? Do you feel like he's essentially lobbying you on 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 how you ought to be campaigning and on what kind of president you ought to be if you I get to do that? Rachel, I don't look at it that way. What I I do think what the president said is, look, the future of our country is not to wage uh, bigoted attacks. You know, and he didn't get into it in detail, but we know what he's talking about against Latinos, where Donald Trump is suggesting that Mexicans who are coming into this country are rapists or criminals, and that we shouldn't be waging attacks against people uh, who are Muslims, that to go forward, we've got to go forward together and not allow ourselves to be divided up. That is an extraordinarily important message, because what demagogues like Trump want to do is to divide us up take our eyes off the main issue, and that is how do we reverse income and wealth inequality? How do we create decent paying jobs for all of our people? How do we end this corrupt campaign finance system which is undermining American democracy? How do we make sure that our public colleges and universities are tuition free, et cetera, et cetera. And the only way we accomplish that goal is when we come together, not when we get divided up. Senator, you have, um, I'm going to ask you a, a, a political race question now. Um, you are surging right now. I don't know if there's some exogenous factor that, it, factor that is driving that or if it is something about the way you and Secretary Clinton are campaigning. But right now, uh, your numbers are up. Your numbers are up a lot in New Hampshire. Uh, they're up in Iowa and they are up also um, nationwide. I wonder if you yeah. have, a, have a diagnosis for that. And I also wonder if you um, have any overall feeling about the sharp contrast that Secretary Clinton is trying to draw with you on the interest of guns. During the president's speech well, tonight, she put out a new ad specifically on the issue of guns. It's titled, I'm with him, saying it's time to pick a side, essentially implying that you're not with the president on this right. issue. Well, as I think you know, most Americans know by now, I am absolutely with the president uh, on uh, guns. I very strongly support uh, his uh, efforts uh, to bring forth an executive order which will make it uh, more difficult for people who should not have guns to get guns to move forward to end the so-called gun show loophole. Look, I have a D minus voting record from the NRA. D minus. Uh, back in 1988, long time ago, Rachel, I may well have lost an election because I had the courage to stand up and say that maybe in the United States we might want to ban assault weapons, military weapons designed to kill a whole lot of people. So I think what Secretary Clinton knows 
is that I think she is in trouble now in New Hampshire and Iowa. These going to be a hard fought races. But she understands that the American people are sick and tired of seeing the middle class continuing to decline. Almost all new income and wealth going to the top 1%. The American people now want leadership that is prepared not to take money from Wall Street, not to take money from the pharmaceutical industry, but to stand up to the big money interests who have so much power over our economy and our political life. That's why I believe we're doing well. Senator, I've been called a tumbler, and I want to be a tumbler right now and raise some a noise level. Why are the Democratic campaign debates, I mean, they're now close. You're within, what, 40 to 48 in the latest CBS poll. You are a competitive candidate. You and Hillary Clinton are right there by yourselves. Why don't we have a debate like, say, during the week when people are watching television? Why do you have these weird, why don't you have these, it's almost like you're having them <laughs> Sunday morning at 6. Why do you have these Saturday? Why did you go along with it? Why did your people allow this campaign to be hidden? Well, all right, Chris, 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 you're I'm asking. right. You're, all right, and your assertion is right. You know, some people have suggested uh, maybe the debate would be 3 a.m. on Christmas <laughs> Eve, you know? <laughs> but look, what we were told, and make no mistake about it, we weren't said, let's sit down and talk about when and where we hold debates. We were told, I think our uh, our campaign maybe learned about it a few hours before, a day before. We were told that that is the way it was going to be. So please, you are right in your criticism. Why don't you change it now, now that you're close to Hillary Clinton and the numbers nationally, and say, go back to Debbie Wasserman Schultz and say, look, we want to schedule five or six or whatever debates between now and the, and, the, and the beginning of the process so we can actually address the American people with this debate instead of, instead of having it hidden. That's, a, that's, I think, a great idea. Count me in. Look, I mean, one of the absurd <laughs> things, job. absolutely. <laughs> it's not my job, it's your <laughs> job. Right, yes. <laughs> you know, one of the absurd things is the Republican debates have, you know, 15, 20, 25 yeah, million people good watching it. We have, we have 8 million people watching it. So we are not getting our ideas out to the American people, which, quite frankly, in all cases, are a heck of a lot better than this right-wing nonsense we're hearing from the Republicans. So, yes, I mean, I am open to the absolutely to the idea of more debates okay. and having them on prime Steve time. Steve Schmidt Absolutely. has a question for you, Senator. Senator Sanders, good evening. I think you're on track to shock the political world, to win the Iowa caucuses, to win the New Hampshire primary. Put yourself on February 9th, you've just won the New Hampshire primary. The empire is ready to strike back now. What are you gonna be saying <laughs> from that victory stage, having won the New Hampshire primary, most improbably, against the conventional wisdom. How are you going to bring it home and be the well, Democratic first thing, nominee? First thing, first thing, Steve, don't jinx me, please. <laughs> I should have opened with that. Don't get me up there on the stage. Look, here's what I think, and I've said this time and again. I think we have a good chance to win in Iowa. I feel a lot of momentum there. I think we got a good chance to win in New Hampshire. But please, uh, we certainly do not underestimate Secretary Clinton's uh, organization. She has more money in the bank uh, than we have. So it's going to be a hard-fought struggle. But let me say this. If by, you know, some chance we do win in Iowa and we do win in New Hampshire, we are prepared and we're starting right now. I mean, we already have uh, strong organizations in Nevada, in South Carolina, and many of the states uh, that will be voting on March 1st. We are in this for the long haul. We think our message that there's something profoundly wrong with the middle class continues to decline and almost all new wealth and income goes to the top 1%. I think that's a message that's resonating. It's going to carry us to the end. And I think we have, oh, good, Steve, I think you're right. I think we have a real shot to pull off one of the great political upsets in American history. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator, it's a real pleasure to have you on uh, whenever you can make time, but particularly on a big night like this. It's great to have you here. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks. I want to bring in NBC's uh, political director, Chuck Todd.